So this week on Ties Eye Season 2, we get the reason why Diane got her sin of envy. So let's uh, tackle, you know, the elephant in the room. I mentioned this a couple episodes back when she was starting to lose her memories, but let's, you know, get into it now, okay? So Diane, she has lost her memories, and she's lost her memories all the way up to the point of right before she really got to meet the seven deadly sins. She got to meet Meliodas, but that's pretty much all she remembered, and then she lost all of that. She doesn't really remember anything. She doesn't know anything about the seven deadly sins or how, you know, all of her characters are doing. She doesn't even remember their names or anything. And so we get to see insight into what Diane was doing before she was acquainted with our main cast of characters. Now, I know for a fact many are going to be complaining about this episode. Let's get some of these complaints out of the way and get right into them and see if, you know, they're actually worthy of complaining about or if it's something that is just little and it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Diane, she lost her memories. And yes, this is... A repeated plot point. Yes, she lost her memories in the past because King, you know, messed with her mind a little bit, made her forget the 500 years she was away, and that's kind of what resulted in her not really knowing about who she really loved. For instance, loving King in the first place and King loving her, which resulted in when they had a very awkward relationship. And so that is why in this episode when he was talking to Galter and he's like, I have no right to put you down because I did the exact same thing. I'm in no position to complain. It's because he's like, you removed her memories, uh, I also did the exact same thing, so I have no right to, you know, put you down for what you did. You see how this is a repeated plot point. For instance, Diane has lost her memories in the past, and now she's losing them again, and I can see many looking at this and saying that this is lazy writing, and in some cases, I do admit it is. I I'm a fan of Taizai, I love this series, I love Diane as a character, but I do admit that this is in some ways lazy. But at the same time, it is worth it. At the end of the day, after being a manga reader, knowing what is coming, it is worth it. In the end, everything that happens, it is worth it. But I do admit that the process to get to that end conclusion, it is annoying. And Galther reveals the reason why he removed Diane's memories was because he wanted to prove a point. Diane stated to Galther, like, even if you erase someone's memories, you get rid of what they, you know, had in their life or what they remember their emotions will still be there. For instance, let's say you love someone, okay? But then someone comes in and they completely remove all of your memories of ever meeting this person or even loving this person, okay? Like, you, the emotion is apparently going to still be there, but you forget the whole reason why you fell in love or how you met them. And so he was wanting to test if you remove everything, will the person still have those emotions? And so he wanted to prove a point with Diane, and that's why. So in a way, you could say Galther was very petty. He was a very petty individual, but he wasn't doing it because he wanted to be petty. He did it because he just was doing a hypothetical experiment. That's all it was, because as we know, he wants to know about emotions. He wants to understand emotions and things. We've already seen this from what he did a couple episodes back. So it falls in line with his character for what he did to Diane. He was wanting to know if memories are removed, will emotions linger on? And now that he's basically seen that Diane has forgotten everything, and she's forgotten how she loved King, and she's just run off to go back to where her land was, you know, the land of the giants and stuff, or her homeland, it makes a lot of sense. He was correct by his, you know, hypothesis. Quick little tidbit for all of you anime onlys out there for Taizai. Um, back in season one, when there was, like, the fight festival and all that, when you had that big tournament going on, you remember when Diane and Meliodas and all them were fighting in the tournament, and you had it to where, like, uh... Meliodas first uh, first time ever he showed his demonic form like he went demon mode well in that fight tournament when all the characters had their own names they went under when they were fighting you had to where Diane she mentioned that her name was Matrona she actually went by the name Matrona when she was fighting in that tournament when she fought you know Hauser when she fought you know Meliodas and all of them Grimoire she went by the name Matrona. So, right there, it does let us know that Nakaba Sensei has had this backstory for Diane plan for a while now. He just had it in his pocket, just waiting to finally reveal it for a good long while, and he finally did with this episode. Yeah, I know many are going to be looking at this episode and saying like, okay, Chibi, this episode, I like Diane. Like, you're going to be saying like, I like Diane and all, I like seeing that booty that she has, and all those type of things, whatever you like Diane for, but at the end of the day, 
it is a very slow episode. Like, we want to see the Ten Commandments. We want to see what's going on with them. And I, I can understand why you would say that, because actually the content within this episode was from a side chapter. Normally, the backstories to our sins, how they got their sin in the first place, like the sin of envy to the sin of greed and all of that, usually those chapters are side stories. For instance, completely separate from the main series. It's extra chapters that Nakaba writes. And so I can understand why many would look at this and say it's, it was just there to slow down the plot, but in reality, this is usually, this type of content is just side chapters while Nakaba continues writing his series. So let's get into the other bad thing, which I need to get right into. I mentioned the first one, which had to do with the whole memory loss. So the second bad thing that many might complain about when it comes to this episode is Matrona taking the poison an arrow. The complaints many are going to have about this is why didn't Matrona, you know, use the earth and all that, put the, like, the earth pillar in front of Diane to block the blow when the arrow was coming in? Like, why didn't she do that? Because you clearly saw in this episode that she could put up these pillars very quickly, multiple times. So it wasn't something that was very slow. It wasn't like it took, like, 30 seconds to get the pillar out of the ground. So, I could see why people would come to this conclusion and ask, like, why didn't Matrona just put a pillar up and all of that, okay? Like, why didn't Matrona just do that to protect Diane instead of running all the way over, or taking the blow, and then dying in this episode? It's an honest complaint. It is. There is an explanation, like, my personal explanation, but at the same time, it could be just a, uh, an error on Nakama's part. It could be the equivalent of Piccolo's, you know, uh, jumping in front of Gohan and dying. For instance, how, you know, Dragon Ball began and how he ran over to Gohan. He could have easily have grabbed Gohan and just moved him out of the way instead of dying, but he didn't do that because plot reasons. So, in a lot of ways, that could be what Matrona was in that moment. It could have been like the equivalent of Piccolo and all that jumping in front of Nappa's blast and dying, but even then, though, there is another logical conclusion if you want to think about it. Maybe the reason why she did that was because she wanted to set an example for Diane. She wanted Diane to have a reason to kill people. Because that was what the whole flashback was about. The whole backstory of Diane was to show how different she is from a normal giant, and how she also is very gifted, very strong, stronger than a normal giant, and she could definitely be the next leader of the tribe. But the only thing that was lacking was that Diane just did not want to harm people for the sake of harming people. So to give some clarification, the giant clan, they are fueled by combat. For instance, they want to always fight, they want to have combat, and they want to die in combat. That is what the giants live for. And so they go amongst human wars, they intervene and all that, they get hired as mercenaries because they just want to have live combat. And so they want to die on the battlefield. So even if they fight someone from their own kin, for instance another giant, it doesn't disturb them in the least because if one of them dies, at the very least they're offering them a very warrior-like death. They die with honor. That's how they view it in their, you know, culture. So, Diane, she didn't like that. She didn't want to be a part of that culture. She did not want to just go out there and fight for the sake of fighting. She wanted to fight for the people she cared about, the people she loved. For instance, she will fight if she has to, but she doesn't want to just fight for the sake of fighting. So, it does show that, at the end of the day, if that is what Matrona was trying to do, she was using her own life as a way to persuade Diane to lead the people and be like her, she failed. So, I could see why many are upset, but that's my personal reason why she probably did, uh, did that, like, my thoughts on why she did it, but like I said, it could be just chopped up to a Piccolo-type moment, for instance, just not dodging even though you could have grabbed the person and then ran out of the way, or you could have, in this case, put up a Earth Pillar to block the incoming arrow. Now, there is something I want to debunk as well, because some will complain about it. Why didn't Diane just, you know, harden her body? Like, why didn't she have, like, metal, a uh, metal coating on her body? That would have been fine if you you know, the arrow's coming in, it would have blocked the arrow. Uh-uh, no, no, it would not have blocked it. Like, let me explain the details of what was said when that moment happened. It was stated that the tipped poisoned arrow and all that could kill a dragon and all of them with just a scratch. So, the uh, you know, the giant clan, if it was just a scratch, they would die. So, even if Diane was able to stop it from not being completely piercing into her skin, if it was a small scratch, over. It's just completely over. So, not to risk that at all... 
That's why Matrona jumped over there. The metal arm or metal coating probably wouldn't have protected Diane in the first place from the poison. So there you go. Just clarifying that for anyone that was a little bit, you know, worried about that. Why didn't Diane do that? That it's because she probably couldn't stop herself from at the very least getting a scratch. Because you gotta match a big tipped arrow coming in like that sharp with that amount of you know force and all that and wind pressure. It's probably gonna pierce or give it at the very least a scratch to Diane. We also get some clarification of where this backstory takes place. This backstory actually actually takes place after the whole revelation with King. For instance, when King and Diane were, you know, hanging out and chilling for 500 years and King lost track of time, this backstory takes place after that. Apparently, Diane does remember some parts or aspects of the time she spent with King. She remembers this person, this boy, and all that, but that's pretty much it, and she's forgotten everything else. It's basically like she's went back to ground zero. She's went back to the very beginning when she first met Meliodas, and then she got confused, thinking that the person that she was in love with this entire time was actually Meliodas instead of King. Since, you know, she saw, you know, Meliodas, she confused the lines from what King said to her when she was younger, with Meliodas. So that's what that scene was trying to show and clarify that Diane now, she is confusing Meliodas for King. The entire time throughout the journey of Ty's Eye since the very beginning, she's always confused Meliodas with King. I think that's pretty much about it. I mean, it's a good episode. I mean, it has its bad moments, I admit. There is some things that are questionable about this episode, but overall, I personally enjoyed it. I could see why many would be upset with the episode. I'm not going to, you know, deny that and, you know, say that those thoughts on the episode don't matter because I can understand why. But I like this episode. I like Diane for obvious reasons. Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And I love you guys. Please be safe. Chibi out.